Hello and welcome to this AI Music Creativity Prism Spotlight presentation. I'm Emily Howard. I'm a composer. I'm Professor of Composition at the Royal Northern College of Music in Manchester, and I'm Director of PRISM. And PRISM is the Centre for Practice and Research in Science and Music at the RNCM. PRISM was launched in 2017. I suppose we felt that we wanted an environment for artists and scientists, mathematicians, musicians, and um, people developing new technology, AI, to come together and chat. We were keen to involve students alongside researchers and in 2019 we were lucky to receive a million pounds from Research England's Expanding Excellence in England Fund, E3, and that was to support and augment our research. And since then we've gone on to develop in particular um, a speciality in AI and music. My name is Marcus de Sotoy and I'm a professor of mathematics at the University of Oxford, um, but also the co-director of PRISM at the RNCM. I've always been fascinated in the connections between mathematics and music. People have talked about this connection for centuries. Um, and I was really excited to meet Emily Howard, composer at the RNCM, who also shares my passion for this connection. And we thought it'd be really interesting to form a centre which um, might allow us uh, to look at this connection more deeply and also to collaborate with others, potentially to get new insights, um, perhaps realise new compositions. So Prism Software Learning is uh, Prism's flagship software uh, and uh, it, it's uh, an implementation of the Sample RNN Neural Network Architecture, which was first outlined in a paper in 2017. So at PRISM, we, we began, uh, began working with colleague, uh, PRISM colleague Sam Salem in 2019, and we wanted to get the original code for the project working again, but we couldn't because it simply doesn't work anymore. It's deprecated. And so we took the decision to simply rewrite the entire thing from scratch, uh, which we did in early 2020. RNNs are a special type of neural network uh, specialized for dealing with sequences and uh, audio data um, generally speaking is sequential and consists of streams of samples so they're learning the features of the audio uh, samples the audio data um, so you work with a typically you work with a data set of uh, audio chunks and these can be quite big and uh, it takes quite a, quite a while to process these as well um, but uh, luckily at prison we have the kit to do that my opera with the BBC Philharmonic that I've been working on for the past few years is going to be premiered this October. The libretto has been written by a poet called Niall Campbell, who's also doing a PhD alongside mine. I had the idea of creating a character who would have a whole electronic sound world that was very contrasting to the orchestral sound world. It kind of escalated to the point of creating a whole alter ego, which I could perform with, called Norisette. And from that, I then had discussions with PRISM, including Chris and Emily, about how I might collaborate with artificial intelligence. And I realised that my pop music was the perfect avenue to do that. So with quite an open mind and not knowing what the result would be, I sent my whole output as Norisette to Chris, the software engineer, and he processed that through, he taught it to sample RNN. And the audio files that I got back were um, they're quite a surprise to me. It was really interesting to hear a computer singing in my voice effectively. And having got all this material back, um, it then gave me the idea of creating actually some work separate to the opera, as well as then working out how I would feed it into the opera work. And I created an EP, which is all about my collaboration with Sample RNN, and it's about the human condition as well. So questioning philosophically what it means to be human or artificial intelligence as well as doing this EP, which I then have performed live at, for example, Blue Dot Festival, which is a huge music and science festival in the UK. I've also used that material from Sample RNN in my opera. I loved the potential of this artificial intelligence kind of almost random chaos that you get. It's not random in some ways, it's, it's still constructed, but to a listener, it feels quite broken and chaotic compared to something that I've constructed. So it was the perfect avenue to use the sample RNN material within my opera. The major piece um, of research from my PhD is this piece, Silicon, which is a, a big piece for orchestra and artificial intelligence. Um, and it's in three movements, and, and each of the movements explores how AI might interact with the orchestra in a slightly different way. 
Um, so the, the first movement um, looks at AI that uh, generates sheet music or um, symbolic uh, generative algorithms. The second movement uses a uh, machine learning based instrument, so it uses live machine learning to generate new timbres on the fly, and this instrument is embedded in the orchestra. And the third movement uses um, audio generative AI. It mostly uses Prism Sample RNN, uh, which I trained on a, an archive of the BBC Philharmonic Orchestra's um, radio broadcasts. Um, and it also uses a little bit of Rave as well, the, the algorithm from EarCam. And I suppose more widely, this project is, um, yes, it's obviously about how to use AI in my practice in writing for the orchestra, um, but it's also about kind of what um, writing for an orchestra or being an orchestra means in a in sort of the modern world where for example um, we might not even need orchestras to record film soundtracks or people don't need them anymore and we might not need um, composers to write certain types of music because of machine learning and we have all these other concerns that come with machine learning not just to do with music and so the piece is partly about that as well. I'd like to introduce very briefly two projects First of which is a work for solo cello and electronics called This Is Fine, um, which was composed during the first lockdown um, as part of the New Unusual project run by Distractfold Ensemble and funded by Ernst von Siemens Music Foundation. Um, so this piece is a kind of dialogue between a live cellist and a um, fixed media part based upon a, a neural synthesis algorithm, in this case Prism Sample RNN. So in this piece, Alice Purton, the cellist, um, she iterated a whole series of studies of uh, solo cello material with me, and this material was then used to create a model um, which generates the fixed media output. The second project that I'd like to introduce is called Unsupervised and it's run by the Machine Learning for Music Working Group, which is a group that I established with Professor Ricardo Clement um, of the Novars Research Centre at the University of Manchester and uh, Richard Armendinger from the uh, Manchester Alliance Business School. So this project brings together practitioners and participants from acoustic and electroacoustic music and also researchers from the Business School and the Computer Science Department at the University of Manchester, so it's really interdisciplinary. The Texcoms project has been a great, great privilege for me to work with Jennifer Walsh and with um, Ragnar Olofsson. Um, first of all, I should say what a text score is. So, so a text score is really just some instructions um, to do an activity. These have fascinated Jennifer Walsh for a long time, and she's built up a collection of these, um, going back to the Fluxus movement in the 60s. Uh, and what's really distinctive about Jennifer's collection is that there's just nothing else like it because they're all in one, one place. Um, and now this is an exciting opportunity because we could use a collection like that to train uh, using machine learning and, and artificial intelligence, if you like, for generating text scores, which could be part of a human compositional process. And the, the goal of the project was to make this corpus available to the community to use, also to the community to add more to it. Uh, and what we did in, um, in 2021 was release this data set, um, but also a booklet of text scores generated by various different artificial intelligence techniques. This was a very collaborative process where um, I, I was creating code, but Jen and Ragnar were then changing that code, changing the parameters in the code uh, to generate different outputs. And in the booklet that we produced with these computer-generated text scores, uh, uh, Jennifer's done a really good job of describing which techniques were used for which score, which different artificial intelligence machine learning techniques were used, so that people can take that uh, and build on it. 
the ones that we've been doing today, for example, um, number 42, which is after all the musicians have indicated that each is ready for the next piece, play a dissonantly energetic music or noise for 30 seconds. Another piece that we were rehearsing today is improvisation number one, which just says performers are asked to lie down on the floor and do the best they can. I just think that there's something really charming and really amusing about it. I don't know how the AI got there. That's what's really interesting is I really want to go, I, I really want to go into the machine, into the black hole of this AI and see how it connects the dots to performers are asked to lie down on the floor and do the best they can. Like, where did it get each of those elements from? The, the project that I've been developing with non-classical uh, is called Dynamical Systems and Natural Environments. So we've been exploring how AI might be related to this theme of dynamical systems and natural environments. Uh, we, we commissioned an artist called Chihiro Ono, who's been working with the PRISM team uh, to explore this. Uh, Chihiro has been using lots of samples for, of, of Japanese field recordings alongside samples of uh, her playing the violin in various ways uh, and also some samples of folk, uh, old folk field recordings. Uh, and then these have been all fed into the AI machine to see to see what comes back and then how Chihiro will will work with this and create something from this. Uh, it's still still to be seen because it's still a work in progress. We've got a number of upcoming projects, including the Wernicke's area, with a new productions at the Irish Museum of Modern Art. The work derives from and reflects the personal story of Deborah Boss, wife of Anu's co-founder, Owen Boss. Deborah underwent emergency surgery to remove a tumour from what is known as the Wernicke's area of the brain. And we're exploring brain seizure and neurophysiology through live music, installation art, performance, and an immersive sound design rooted in our machine learning software, Prism Sample RNA. We are doing a pilot project. We named it Adversarial Timbre Composition. And the basic premise is that there are a lot of innovation in uh, the way we can uh, interpret sound or kind of music information retrieval is developing new techniques for extracting information from sound. And our idea is that by putting performers in direct interaction with these, some of these features, we can learn some interesting things. And we created a system where some audio features are extracted in real time and displayed graphically for the performers in real time. So they play their instrument and they see some representation of the sound. And this is kind of an interesting interaction where they can control uh, a visual display through their sound. I've been really surprised through the interviews that we've done with all the composers that have used Prism Sampler and in the to the extent with which Chris Meelan has been involved differently in each of the projects. And I've been really surprised um, to learn what composers have asked of him or not. And I've also I've been surprised by the questions that I personally, doing this process myself, didn't know to ask. There's been a lot that I didn't know to ask that doing this research, mm. talking to all these composers, I've discovered all these new questions and I've really looking forward to sharing that through the paper. And we were talking to uh, m many artists and composers who have worked with Prism Samurai in the past two years and to hear their stories and uh, to see how the software informed their decision making and how um, a kind of new relationship between AI software and the creative practice, especially music, uh, has been engendered from this process. This year we've been thrilled to host composer and professor George Lewis in a year-long residency developing a new cutting-edge expansion of his pioneering Voyager system. Working with a team at PRISM, Lewis has been exploring the latest artificial intelligence tools to augment his innovative software, often called a virtual pianist, together with a new commission for this new system, plus flute, clarinet, trumpet, trombone and tuba, and we can't wait to hear it. We are always keen to hear from anybody interested in collaborating with us. To get in touch, visit www.rncm.ac.uk slash PRISM. Thank you to AI Music Creativity for featuring Prism and thanks to you all for watching.